In this presentation, we will see how to combine a capacitor and a transistor together to make DRAM, dynamic RAM, dynamic random access memory. DRAM is an example of sequential logic as opposed to combinatorial logic. So combinatorial logic, basically a truth table, is determined, the output is determined solely by the inputs. Whereas in sequential logic, it depends not only on the inputs, but on some states, some previous state of the system. Circuitry can be designed to sort of hold a high or a low state and, that, and thus be remembering dependent on its previous state when it's holding that state. And such circuitry is known as a flip-flop, so the, the smallest unit of memory or of sequential logic is known as a flip-flop. It's the smallest a unit in RAM, random access memory. And there are two categories of RAM, dynamic RAM, DRAM, and static RAM, SRAM. Basically, we need two basic things from a flip-flop, reading and writing, or we'll say holding, keeping the value that is in there and thus to be read, and then the writing, which we will break down and call setting when we're writing a one and resetting when we're writing a zero. So we need to be able to do two things, to be able to change the value when we want and for it to be able to hold the value when we want that. The difference between SRAM and DRAM is the way in which the holding is done. In DRAM, the holding is done by the charge on a capacitor. So the capacitor either will be charged and correspond to a one or a high, or it will not be charged, it will be discharged, and therefore it will be zero or a low. Charges on a capacitor tend to leak off eventually, and that's why DRAM must be periodically refreshed. Let's recall our transistor basics. When enough voltage is applied to the base input, then the transistor is said to be on and the resistance of the transistor, specifically the collector to emitter resistance, is low. On the other hand, when not enough voltage, say less than 0.5 of a volt, is applied to the base, then the transistor is off and the resistance, again, this collector to emitter resistance, is quite high. So we're going to look at a simple DRAM circuit. We're going to take our transistor and our capacitor, and we'll also add in two resistors and two inputs that we're labeling here, D and C. So we have a one circuit that is through input D, through resistor R1, to the transistor, the collector to emitter, and then to the capacitor, and sort of then down to the ground. And then there's a sort of a second circuit part to this, which is the, the base emitter part of the circuit. And that is input C, resistor R2, at the base emitter part of the transistor, and then the capacitor. Okay, so the basic purpose of the uh, C input connected to the base is going to be whether the transistor is on or off and whether in when it's on it will be a low resistance and when it's off it will be a high resistance. So right now we are showing the DRAM in its reset setting. So the C input is high, so the transistor is on, its resistance is low, and then we have the D input is low. And so the capacitor wants to discharge because it's connected to lows on both sides. D is low and the other side's connected to ground. So the capacitor wants to discharge and the resistance of the transistor is effectively low. So it wants to discharge and it can. So it is resetting. We're setting the charge of the capacitor to discharge to, we're forcing it to be a low. That is a reset. If we keep the input C high so that the transistor remains on, but change D to high, now we have brought the, the high end of the battery into the circuit. And so we would like to charge up the capacitor. And again, with the transistor's effective resistance to be low because 
the C input uh, at the base is turning the, resist the transistor on, giving it a low resistance. So we are connected to the battery and we have a low enough resistance so the capacitor will charge. So this will be a set. Next, we flip the C input connected to the base low. So now we are turning the transistor off. And so the effective resistance of the transistor is high. And so that is going to effectively isolate the capacitors because uh, if it were to charge or discharge, it would be through a very high resistance. And we know that the time constant of an RC circuit is R times C. And we know that the resistance, the effective resistance of a transistor is sort of like thousands of times bigger than other resistances. So this is going to be uh, any, any change in the capacitor is going to take a very long time. So we are now in a hold. We happen right now to be holding a high. Now we have flipped switch D to be low. So D is connected to low. So on the sort of top end of the capacitor through the transistor, it's connected to low and the bottom part of the capacitor is connected to low. So the capacitor might like to discharge, but it would have to do so through the transistor and the transistor is currently off and so it has a gargantuan resistance and so though it would like to discharge it's not uh, going to or it's going to take a very very long time so we are still in a hold state and we are holding the high now we flipped the c input to high so then that is connected to the base so we have turned the transistor on made its effective resistance small and we are just we still are have uh, the D switch connected low and the bottom of the capacitor is connected low. So the capacitor wants to discharge as it did before. But now that the transistor's effective resistance is small, it can do so. And so we are now discharging. So we are it, we want it, the D is forcing it to discharge and the C is allowing it to discharge. And so we are now in a reset. Now we flip C to low, C feeds the base, and so the transistor is now off, and the resistance of the off transistor is high, and so we once again sort of isolated the capacitor because to discharge or charge or any such thing, it would have to go through the transistor, but the transistor has this high resistance so it's you know sort of effectively disconnected and so now we are in a hold and we happen to be holding a low we flipped the d switch to high so the the we've brought the battery back into the circuit and the capacitor would like to charge but the c input is low and so the transistor is off it has a very high effective resistance and so although we would like to be charging the capacitor it's simply going to take too long because of the super high resistance of the transistor so again we are still in the hold state we are holding a low so the simple transistor capacitor combination gives us all we want it allows us to force the capacitor to, to charge, to set when the C is high and the D is high. So the C is allowing the writing to occur and D is the data, so we are writing a high. It will allows us to force the capacitor to discharge, to reset. When C is high, the D is low. So the D is serving as the data, and so we are writing a low. It allows us to have the capacitor, if it is charged, to remain charged. This is a hold, holding a high. So when the C is low, the, the, the transistor's effective resistance is quite high, and we hold it. It doesn't matter what we do with D, it is holding the high. It also allows us, if the capacitor is discharged, to remain discharged. So again, when C is low, when the capacitor is, when the transistor is off, then the 
has that very effective high resistance and it doesn't matter what D is, it will stay discharged, it will hold the low.